Hi guys, it's been forever. It's been about three weeks since I did a video. And one of the reasons why is because I've been trying to figure out, I think I've been unmotivated in some ways um, to do videos because I feel like everybody's on there trying to do videos. And so I thought, oh, it's flooded or whatever. But now I'm thinking, who cares? It's motivating, it's inspiring, I love doing them. So I'm just gonna do something simple today. I'm gonna do a glam makeup look. It's the last thing I know anybody wants to do right now, but it's fun to watch and it's inspiring. And it's getting me motivated to actually get dressed and do my hair and makeup. So hopefully it'll motivate you or you'll learn some great tips. If you watched my videos before, you know that I love mixing airbrush with um, powdered makeups. I love creating unique looks. Um, I'm very vintage inspired, pinup inspired, but at the same time very modern. So I like to combine styles and kind of have this juxtaposition of um, dualities and different kind of looks. So I hope you enjoy it. If anything, you're entertained and uh, let's get started. So I've already done um, a concealer and an eyebrow. I'm going to add on my airbrush foundation and I'm going to do a cool eye for this Friday. Um, I might be posting this on the Tuesday. So either way, it's just fun. And um, if you have any questions about the makeup, just put them below. I answer all of them. I look at all of them and I appreciate uh, when you watch and I really love it when you like, share, and click the bell for notifications and subscribe to my channel because it really helps me out and keeps me inspired. So um, once again, let's get started on this airbrush slash eyeshadow powder makeup look. Bye guys. So as always, I put a black towel in my lap when I do my airbrush and I have my, my airbrush gun. Um, and I'm just gonna set that up. So I always spray first uh, before I put any product and it gets out any of the extra cleaner. I always leave a little cleaner in my airbrush so nothing gets jammed. And I always have a supply of pointed Q-tips, uh, flat end and pointed end. I pull back the lever and before I start anything, I always make sure it's clean so that everything flows. And that's a regular thing I do in between all colors. Um, it's just what I do. A lot of airbrush makeup artists do something else. The companies don't really teach you. And your, clog, your guns will clog. So you have to be careful with them. So I really uh, take care of my guns. Anyway, so it's blowing. It's great. So I'm going to start with the foundations. So I love using a light and dark foundation if you've watched a lot of my makeup videos. Um, sometimes I put my highlight first through the center and sometimes I do my dark first and then do my highlight over top. So it's whatever I feel like doing, they both work. Right now I have a lot of discoloration from breakouts. I had a really bad breakout around my mouth. So um, I've been using this really great concealer. I've been using it for years. And it's actually a warmer color than my skin tone. It's a MAC. Pro Concealer. I love these because they're thick and concealer is basically foundation. So um, I cover my wherever I have darker acne spots, discoloration, blend that in. That's usually my gym or my walking look for the morning. And then I put my foundations over top, light and dark. So I do about, I guess you could say three colors. It's super quick. It takes me probably two minutes to do my base foundation look. Um, teach his own. So I like to have kind of depth and different shades of light and dark throughout my makeup. And I find that really helps create dimension. It just makes the skin look even in a strange way, even though you're using different colors. So today I'm going to use my lighter color first, just because I'm feeling really self-conscious about the discoloration and the acne scarring. It is going away. I'm using some great products from Neutrogena. It just happens. That's life. So you constantly have to be taking care of your skin, especially when you wear makeup. You have to be cleaning it off. And one of the reasons I went to airbrush makeup for my foundation is because it didn't make me break out. So when I do break out, I know it's not my makeup. I know it's just life stress. I have to constantly be cleaning. I have to be exfoliating. And if I forget to do that, my skin just builds up. So I'm going to go in around the mouth. And I'm just going to keep a nice distance and do a circular motion while I'm pulling back and forth on the lever. I don't know if anyone tells you that if you're new to airbrush or not, but... Um, a lot of people watching think I'm just pressing the lever if you haven't done airbrush. You're actually moving it back and forth and you're using it at a certain distance to get a certain consistency with your makeup. You're also not overusing your product. So I'm just going through the center where I want it to be a little bit brighter and, and lighter and even. I did my eyebrows first this time just because I felt like it. Sometimes I do it first, a little concealer, and then I'm out the door for a dog walk 
or cardio or what have you. And I do my eyebrows quite thick. I like that look right now. And I'm using the Micro Pen by L'Oreal as well as the L'Oreal Very Fine Point uh, Black. Um, oh, my gun's dying. So I'm going to charge that. And you can use it while it's charging. So that's what's so great about airbrush guns. But yeah, so I've been doing my eyebrows with the L'Oreal, let's get the name here, Brow Styler. And it's got a really tiny point. And then I'll go in with a lighter, this is a dark brown. Um, I've started using the black in this uh, just because it's actually just looks a lot better. My eyebrows are naturally black and it defines them. So when I put my whole look together, it makes more sense than having brown eyebrows and black hair. I'm sorry, I just don't like that look. I know every makeup artist, you go to them and that's what they do. And it's usually people who don't have black hair or black eyebrows. So that's what I do. Whatever you do is your own choice. Um, I personally don't like brown eyebrows with black hair. I think it looks fake, even though I'm wearing a lot of makeup. Uh, anyway. So we're going to go in. I'm just once again cleaning out the gun, making sure everything is sprayed out. I spray into my towel. You can also spray into, I have an airbrush jar and I use this especially on shoots with clients. And I used to use it all the time at home, but um, you know, when you're at home, you just want to get it done. I have so much I'm doing, like <laughs> I'm doing this video, but then I'm going and I'm working seven hours on the computer doing graphic design work and magazine publishing and stuff. And if you haven't heard, I have a magazine called Dirty Glamour. <clears throat> you can get your free copy. I'm just going in with the darker color now and I'm going to do the sides and definition. You can get a free copy of Dirty Glamour magazine, the interactive, if you sign up to my mailing list. You can go to theglamourcircus.com and you can go to mailing list, sign up, and I send you the last four interactive issues as well as um, I'll send you a password for my newest issue which you can view on my website under magazine. And um, I'm growing my magazine from print. I'll always have a print uh, copy that you can purchase, but the interactive's free. You just sign up to my mailing list and I basically have all these gorgeous before and after transformations. I do digital artwork. I'm starting to do features with different um, kind of glamour enthusiasts, people in like pinup and burlesque, interesting walks of life, people who really embrace it and use it as a, a form of transformation, inspiration, a lifeline. So um, I stay tuned for that. And like I said, you can join me on theglamourcircus.com. I've changed my URLs. I've kind of streamlined my marketing. So I have been busy um, doing all that kind of stuff. Those bangs were looking crazy. We needed to comb them. Okay, so now I'm going in with my darker color. So I'll put a link below if you're interested in checking out the mag and in just kind of joining in on that and seeing what I do. Uh, all the artwork's by me and I will be featuring, like I said, different artists. And now with everything that's going on, I'm going to be doing uh, more virtual photography shoots. And I've got a couple concepts for family shoots as well as magazine shoots. So I'm really excited to be launching that. And I'll be doing a video on that, so if you subscribe to my channel, you'll hear more. And you'll also get um, updates as to when the videos come out, which is really handy if you do enjoy my work. Okay, so I've done the two colors. I have the concealer, I have the eyebrows. So I'm just going to clean out the gun, take out the extra foundation. And then I think today we're going to do something fun. I'm going to do a neon yellow. And I'm going to fan it out with a little red. Actually, I'm going to mix in some browns. Let's get, I've got this gorgeous kind of orangey brown called Harvest Pumpkin from one other company that I use. Okay. So I'm just going to shake those really well. I'm also going to use powders. So I have some MAC powders. I have these uh, blushes that I'm going to use. Uh, you have to forgive me, I put that kit together so long ago, I do not know the names off by heart, but if you're a makeup enthusiast, you'll get the idea of the tones and the colors and warm and light. And then I've got different eyeshadows that I'm going to use. I've got this beautiful dark orange that I'm going to pop into the crease. So it's going to be kind of a yellow-orange look. Um, I've been really into kind of these bright colors for summer, and they're just kind of fun. I'm also going to do a black cat eye using my L'Oreal liquid. All right. So I'm just going to go into the lid. I'm going to very carefully spray so it's not too wet. So this is a good way to learn how to use or wear bright yellow eyeshadow. As you can see, it takes two seconds to apply. Sometimes you'll get like a pilling. 
So you're either a little too close or your eyelid's a little wet or maybe what you have on your base is not quite right. I'm gonna go down a little bit and around the eye. I'm spraying so lightly and I'm just pushing my lever back and forth. You don't need much. I'm not stuck on big hard lines. I like to expand and really blend and blur out. So I like to have fun with it. I also find this is a really great way for anyone to just do airbrush without overthinking it. It is not like traditional makeup. And trying to do these fine lines with airbrush, it can be done, but it's it's nerve wracking and it's just kind of annoying. And if you have other tools, why? <laughs> so I'm big on mixing the looks. So um, so that's a nice bright yellow. And then I'm gonna take this Harvest Pumpkin, which is like an orangey brown. It's actually a nice kind of tone to it. It looks like brown when you pour it out, but then when you spray it, it's um, definitely more orange and it was a specialty color from another company. But I use these stencils just to give it shape um, without doing hard lines. Sometimes it does a hard line. It looks really cool. I love using this for my cat eyes, but I'm just gonna kind of mold it. I'm going just underneath my eye and spraying almost like a triangle kind of lower and then inner and up. And you can see, super easy. And then I'm gonna flip it over and do the other eye. And I'm just, once again, I'm putting it just kind of a little lower and I'm going in, up, and just kind of out like that. And then I'm gonna go back to this eye and I'm just gonna match it. My eyes are two different sizes, heights and lengths. So I always have to kind of play with the makeup in terms of the lines. Like I have one eye higher and this eyebrow goes higher. So that's just something to note when you're applying the makeup. And it's done. So I'm now gonna go in and spray that color out. I'm gonna go in with a, it feels a little wet right now. So I'm just gonna take this and it could be I went a little too close. It can be so many things a little too heavy on the product when I push with the gun, but just spray it out. You can always tap it in with some shadow if you make a mistake. And this is just clean air that I'm blowing over top to help dry it up. I'm gonna take a little black and I'm just gonna wing it out. And I am gonna do a sharper line with this just so that I can lay the, the direction and foundation for the eyeliner. I'm gonna do a cat eye with it. So. We are going to, and I'm using like a black, true black for my cat eye. You could actually do a cat eye with any color. Okay, I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna go higher, right underneath the eyelid and just spray across gently and build it. And I always focus a little bit more right on the corner and it's done a really nice airbrush cat eye. You can go in over the lid if you want. I usually don't, because I like to save that. I like to just do a little wider piece here and then save the inner corner for a liquid liner.
that on the other way is one. 